Question 12. How is the capital conservation buffer accounted for in the 2016 SHREEP? Answer. ECB Banking Supervision is taking a different approach in the 2016 Supervisory Review and Evaluation Process SREP, regarding the capital conservation buffer CCB. The CCB will no longer be included on a fully loaded basis. Some member states, Cyprus, Estonia, Finland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg and Slovakia, decided to impose the full CCB on their banks without any phase in as of the 1st of January 2016. Other member states opted for a four-year phase in. This difference led ECB banking supervision to set a SHREEP ratio based on a fully loaded CCB for directly supervised institutions as part of the 2015 SHREEP. This decision has been revised for the 2016 SHREEP. Countries can take a deliberate choice whether they want to apply tougher capital requirements or to adjust to the phase in approach of many peers. Some countries, such as Portugal, have already changed their phase in rules. The CCB is part of the Basel III capital rules and is designed to ensure that banks build up capital buffers which can be drawn down as losses are incurred. The CCB is to reach 2.5% of the risk-weighted assets as of the 1st of January 2019 at the latest. Question 13. How does the 2016 stress test compare to stress tests in other jurisdictions? Answer. The stress test exercises of the EBA, the UK Prudential Regulation Authority, PRA, and the Comprehensive Capital Analysis and Review, CCAR, of the Federal Reserve Bank are not directly comparable as the methodology, scenarios and time horizons differ significantly. Disregarding the differences, the overall impact of the EBA stress test is in line with the PRA 2015 exercise. Compared with the CAR 2016 exercise, the EBA stress test is stricter than the CAR adverse scenario, but less severe than the severely adverse scenario of the CAR. Question 14. How does the 2016 EBA stress test compare to the comprehensive assessment slash stress test of 2014? Since the latter fed into the 2015 SHREEP, what if or bank's capital ratio in the 2016 stress test is lower than the pillar 2 capital demands in the 2015 SHREEP? Would it be fair to deduce that this bank will need to raise fresh capital? Answer. First, the 2014 stress test, as part of the comprehensive assessment, was a much broader exercise than the current one. In 2014, 130 banks took part in the comprehensive assessment which consisted of an asset quality review and a stress test. In preparation for the ECB's takeover of its supervisory responsibilities, the exercise aimed to identify possible capital shortfalls and ascertain if any banks required immediate recapitalization measures. As euro area banks have since moved to more of a steady state and have become better capitalized overall, the aim of the 2016 exercise is rather to assess remaining vulnerabilities and understand the impact of hypothetical adverse market dynamics on banks. The stress test as part of the 2014 comprehensive assessment and the 2016 stress test are hence quite different in nature. In addition, the newly introduced changes in the Pillar 2 structure, breakdown into requirements and guidance, mean that the SHREEP 2015 cannot be directly compared with the findings of the 2016 stress test. It would thus be wrong to deduce that a bank bank must immediately raise capit. And if its capital ratio in the 2016 stress test is lower than the pillar 2 capital demanded in the SHREEP 2015. Question 15. What is the single supervisory mechanism? Answer. The single supervisory mechanism, SSM, is a new framework for banking supervision in Europe. It comprises the ECB and national supervisory authorities of participating EU countries. Its main aims are to ensure the safety and soundness of the European banking system, increase financial integration and stability in Europe. The SSM is an important milestone towards a banking union within the EU. Question 16. Why do we need the single supervisory mechanism? Answer. This helps to rebuild trust in Europe's banking sector. The recent financial crisis has shown how quickly and forcefully problems in the financial sector of one country can spread to another, especially in a monetary union, and how these problems can directly affect citizens across the euro area. 
Question 17. What is the SSM framework regulation and why is it necessary? To whom does it apply? Answer. The SSM framework regulation sets out the legal structure for cooperation with national supervisors, also known as National Competent Authorities, NCAs, within the single supervisory mechanism, SSM. It governs relations between the ECB and national supervisors and includes rules that apply directly to banks. Question 18. When did the single supervisory mechanism become operational? Answer. The single supervisory mechanism, SSM, became operational on the 4th of November 2014. On the 15th of October 2013, the EU Council formally adopted the regulation on the single supervisory mechanism after negotiations with the European Parliament. The SSM regulation then came into force after publication in the official journal of the EU. Under the SSM regulation, the SSM had to be fully operational no later than one year after the regulation entered into force. Question 19. What was the comprehensive assessment? Answer. The comprehensive assessment was the financial health check of significant banks in the euro area and of participating countries. It consisted of two complementary pillars, an asset quality review, AQR, a stress test. The assessment, which began in October 2013 and lasted 12 months, covered the 130 biggest banks in the euro area. It was an important step in the preparation of the single supervisory mechanism and had three main goals. Transparency. All stakeholders should be able to access information on the condition of their banks. Repair. Identified issues should be repaired if and where needed. Confidence building. All stakeholders should be assured that banks are fundamentally sound and trustworthy. Question 20. How is the single supervisory mechanism organized? Answer. Supervisory board. To ensure the separation of supervisory and monetary policy tasks, the supervisory board plans and carries out the ECB's supervisory tasks. This includes proposing draft supervisory decisions, which are put before the governing council of the ECB for adoption. New business areas. Building the single supervisory mechanism, SSM, has required changes to the ECB's organizational structure including the creation of new business areas. Four new directorates general and the secretariat are solely dedicated to banking supervision. Shared services. Existing ECB functions and services are providing additional support to the SSM. These include IT, HR, budget, statistics, communications, legal services and administration. Question 21. How does the single supervisory mechanism operate? Answer. The supervisory board, supported by a steering committee, plans and carries out the ECB's supervisory tasks. These include undertaking preparatory work and proposing draft decisions to the governing council of the ECB. If the governing council, the ECB's main decision-making body, does not object to the draft decisions proposed by the supervisory board, they are considered adopted. The day-to-day -day supervision of significant credit institutions institutions is carried out by joint supervisory teams DSTs. Question 22. What are the joint supervisory teams? Answer. Composition. The joint supervisory teams, DSTs, are one of the main forms of cooperation between the ECB and national supervisors. For each significant bank, a team has been formed of staff members of the national supervisors involved in supervising that bank and staff members of the ECB. The team is coordinated by the ECB with the assistance of sub-coordinators from each national supervisor. Tasks that DSTs carry out on ongoing supervision of the significant banks. Their main tasks are to perform the risk analysis of the supervised entity or group and propose the supervisory program and the appropriate supervisory actions. Question 23. What is the role of the national supervisors? Answer. National supervisory authorities, also known as national competent authorities, NCAs, work together closely with the ECB. They prepare and implement the ECB's adopted decisions. They also directly supervise less significant banks in the participating countries, around 3,500 in the euro area alone, which are not directly supervised by the ECB. However, the ECB can decide at any time to take over the direct supervision of any one of these banks in order to ensure that high supervisory standards are applied consistently. The NCAs are also responsible for consumer protection and for combating money laundering, which are outside the scope of the ECB's supervisory responsibilities.